but this is called an intrusion related deposit. Most of you are known about the orogenic deposits of California, but this is uh, an intrusion related deposit. And actually there's a large dike of porphyry granite that was coming through here and cut through this dolomite. And on the outer edges here is scarn. And the gold is traveling in the scarn. And a lot of times if it outcrops to the surface, it can actually turn into supergene where the gold is redeposited and secondary enrichment begins. And down here in the lower areas, it's really, really rich. You can get wire gold and large masses of gold. Well, I'm gonna chip some of this out and show you what it looks like. Cause I think you're gonna love it. So I got my pan here. See this right here? That's the stuff you're looking for, see that? And this right here, ooh, that's pretty. Now I'm just gonna get a little bit in here because I don't wanna bore you. Classify that out. Come here, take a look at this. All right, take a look at this. This deposit is one of the richest ones I've ever seen, ever. Look at that. I'll see if I can tap that up for you. And this is just a little bit. Look at that. I got pieces there, there, all along the top, just from that little bit. And like I said, there's easy three ounce a ton here. No problem whatsoever. There's an old dynamite box right there. Look at that. Okay, so, come here. I want you to take a look at this. What you want to look for when you're sampling in limonite is where the, the lenses, they become horizontal. Because when you have secondary enrichment, most of that gold is going to form uh, along the horizontal bedding plane, more so than it will in a chute or any type of a, a irregular lens that's vertical. So when you go down in these mines and you see this beautiful limonite, always try to find ones where the, the veins always flatten out and then pull from the bottom of those veins. And I guarantee you, you're going to see gold like you never saw before. And sometimes we found even giant chunks forming like nuggets. You can see all this dolomite right here. See that? Nice solid dolomite. And then you have these these lenses right here, right in between. And I'm gonna take samples from here and maybe up above, cause that stuff's pretty hard. <clears throat> see all that beautiful limonite all the way up? There's this huge lens right here. Now you can see the calcite crystals growing right up in there, see that? Of course that other white material is the alkali is precipitating out of the rock because of the moisture. When you're sampling, you can either bring bags or five gallon buckets or three gallon buckets. I like bags because when I'm on a ladder, it's really hard to manipulate buckets. It's almost impossible. So what you're gonna wanna do is get you some coin bags and an old milk jug or one of these old Tide containers and cut, cut it all the way through like that. See that? You're gonna cut a hole all the way through and then that way you can put it right in the bag and hold it up against the rock face like that. So when you're sampling, it just falls right in like a funnel and you can fill that bag up. And that's what we're gonna do because I see some really nice, good deposits of limonite in here. You can tell by all these tags. See how that acts like a funnel on there? Oh, I love that. So much easier. See how that acts like a funnel? Make sure. Make sure you're wearing a dust mask because you don't want silicosis from all this. That'll ruin your mining days forever. Next, you gotta remember where you got this bag. I like bringing GPS down here, photographing it. But what most miners will do is they'll bring down these little index cards like this. And they'll fill this index card out. I'll leave up a still shot of what it's supposed to look like. Another good thing to have if you're prospecting a lot of deposits is also with your index cards, you're gonna want a compass. I know it sounds weird down inside of a mine, but this way you, you can note the, the strike, which is important because this vein might travel for a few hundred feet or a few hundred yards. You're gonna wanna know the strike. That's why a compass is so good. When you pull a sample here, you're gonna note the location of it. You're gonna write that down on this small index card and you're gonna put it in this sack and then you're gonna tie it up with a shoestring and then you're gonna get your next bag out and you're gonna move down the line maybe about five feet and you're gonna do the same thing again. That's if you think that this is a good vein. I mean, if you don't wanna waste your time because you don't think it's good ore, then don't. But I can tell already that this vein has got gold in it. So what I'm gonna do is I took a sample from here. I'll come up around the side of this, this column here and I'll pull another sample from right over there and then I'll mark that and fill this bag up and that's all we're gonna do is two because I can't haul more than two bags up this ladder. See where that, that lens right here is sitting on this Bedding plane, 
horizontally, I know there's going to be gold right in through here, right at that contact zone. I don't know if you can see this, but there's these nice, beautiful pink tags in here. They put those tags in here along the mineralization zones where uh, gold or silver, whatever they're mining could be. And usually the mine owners or potential uh, leases will put that in there so they can identify. So you know if you see those tags, that's where there's potential minerals at. And you can see all this limonite in here in these huge lenses. And in this particular mine, the limonite forms next to the uh, bedding planes of the dolomite, which is the limestone. That way, I'll be going down. That way. There's my bucket. You see where somebody put a cable here so they could get down there. There's my little pickaxe down there. there. Okay. We're down at the bottom. You see where the stopes go down? Down there, see that? More tags, more rotten timber. We got beer cans. There's a nice way. Probably still. See that wiring in there? That's where I was looking down. Beer cans. Everywhere. Huge stope. Somebody's clothing. See way down there? See these yellow tarps? Somebody's been high grading in here. Back up we go. I'm gonna take these samples out and if they show promises of gold, I'll come back to the spots that I marked on my little index cards. Ah, and then we'll pull out even more. Woo wee, look at that. Yummy, yum, yum. Hot and dusty. Huh. Should've worn my dust mask. K and N makes these crushers and you can get them over at uh, makeyourowngoldbars.com. I'll leave a link down below so you can click on it and go see Steve. He said, Jeff, if they use your name, I'm gonna take some of the money or the price of this thing off. That could be a good deal for you guys out there who have been waiting to get a crusher, but you couldn't afford it. Take the top, the 
front plate off. Take a look at that. All right, so you got these chains in here that rotate around. And of course, the center shaft rotates at 1800 RPM. And there's a formula that you use to determine what this is called the tip speed, the very end, how fast it's rotating around this way. And that's very important. And when you make these things, you want to make sure it spins this direction counterclockwise if your intake port's on the back here. Or if not, you'll be kicking rock straight up in there. And then it's got a small classification screen on the bottom. And then the rocks can't get out till it gets broken down small enough to pass through that screen. Now, I see some guys put them on the bottom here and some guys put them on the side here so it doesn't get clogged up like that. So I got some of that material crushed up here. I'm gonna go ahead and pan this out, make sure my pan is clean. Got nothing in there. Now I'm gonna get some scoops. I know I, I should have got a better scooper, huh? My scooper! <laughs> I know, that's what gold does to you. It drives you crazy. All right, you seen how much material I got there? Hopefully I don't get you wet. I know, all that iron oxide in there, nasty. All right, so I'm gonna pan this out real quick for you. I don't got no sun today. And that crusher works good. And like I said, they're small enough you can take them out in the field. You can get gas powered or electric if you happen to have a generator out there. That works really well. All right, I think that's about as far down as I wanna go. All right, let's see what we got out of that little bit of gold right there, or a little bit of dirt. Okay. Oh, I see something forming on the top. So I'm gonna shake that down real quick. Oh, there's some nice gold right there. I gotta get my goggles off. I can't see nothing. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, if that don't make you all excited inside, nothing will. Let me tap that to the top. Oh, there you go. There you go, get that water out of there. Okay, now look at that, see all that? What is that? That's all gold out of that scar deposit that I just crushed up. See that? And that's what we put in our bags that we sell online. Nothing but limonite that's got all that nice pretty gold in there. See that? All right, we'll go ahead and put the gold in there with the flux, fire it up, and pour it into our cone mold. See what we get. And I'm gonna add a little bit of thinner just for fun. Now as a rule, you should only fill this two thirds. I'm a little bit higher because you want to allow for any bubbling or splattering or boiling over. I got a little bit full on this one, but hopefully it'll be all right. Yeah, always make sure you keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't try to boil over. Keep that cone rolled up so you don't have thermal shock when you go to dump it in. Now I wanted to show you that they do make a flux for sulfide ore, you see that? And we got this from Action Mining Services. They're a fantastic company that specialize in these types of fluxes. Did you see how that poured out like water? That's because I put the thinner in there. Always put your lid on and then turn these off and let it cool down slowly. If you leave the lid off, it could get too cold too fast and start cracking and fracturing. Now you see where this is cracked and fractured? That's why you gotta be careful with it. Some guys like to put one of these over the top while it's cooling because that'll fracture and that's glass. You don't wanna get that in your eye. Oh, look at that. See that? That's a little button of gold right there, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Now that is a beautiful bead of gold. 